Our daily lives are filled with so many distractions. So much in our lives can lead us to become anxious, depressed, disheartened, gloomy, and sad. It is a fact that being happy and joyful takes a lot of work. We have to work hard to avoid the woes of the common life. Our distractions do not only come from the negatives that we must live through, but we can also be distracted by the positives, the victories, the exciting and the flamboyant. Because of this, we must follow an example from our master. Luke chapter 5 verse 16 states, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Prayer is more than going away alone to speak to God. It is finding space in our lives to turn inward and allow God into the sanctuary of our hearts where we can commune with Him. That being said, life can be so fast-paced that unless we literally stop and physically go into a lonely place, we will not fully engage God in prayer. When we are being pulled in every direction, good and bad directions, we must be willing to pull the emergency brake and drift away from the crowd. Jesus did this to demonstrate to us that the soul finds solace when it engages God and God alone. We must always be willing to search our hearts so that we can be sincere when we approach God. Guilt and feelings of condemnation often ensue from unrepentance. When we harbor secret and unconfessed sins, the devil will always hurl accusations at us to hinder us from praying. Psalm 38 demonstrates a soul that is filled with guilt and echoes a burdensome toil. David is speaking to God for sure, but he feels as if he shouldn't be so pertinent. He states in verse 4, My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. This is the weight that rests on our shoulders when we harbor unconfessed sins. Satan finds pleasure in our hearts when we are burdened with guilt. A guilty soul will not find pleasure standing before God. You and I feel this trauma that David explains with such vivid poetry. My heart pounds, my strength fails me, even the light has gone from my eyes. Psalm chapter 38 verse 10. How can we stand to pray when our secret sins have taken such a toll on us? Why does the guilty move away from God? Psychologytoday.com says, guilt is aversive and like shame, embarrassment or pride has been described as a self-conscious emotion involving reflection on oneself. Could it be that the guilty soul avoids God because it doesn't focus on Christ and what He did on the cross that affords forgiveness of sin and the freedom from guilty? Instead, it looks at itself not to correct faulty behavior, but rather to beat upon itself. God doesn't delight in us beating ourselves because we have erred. We must be aware of our wrong and be ready to ask for forgiveness. This is what David did. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by sin. Verse 5 and 18. We must come to this very place in our hearts so that we can find pleasure in God's presence as we commune with Him. Confession frees us from guilt and condemnation. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 When we stop focusing on ourselves and our failures and start to look at God who is faithful, we will find the life-giving power that brings us closer to God in prayer. God promised that He will forgive the sins that are confessed and He is not a liar. He will forgive, but we must look to Him. David beseeched God, Do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Psalm 38 verse 1 We have the assurance as believers that we are no longer by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3b Therefore, we must come before His throne boldly in prayer. Another element of hindrance that pushes us away from the inner sanctum of prayer is doubt and low self-esteem. This results from feelings or beliefs of unworthiness. After we have confessed and taken our sins to the altar, we must believe that God has removed them and that because of Jesus Christ, God binds Himself to listen to the sincere prayers of our souls. 
Paul seemed to have found himself in a similar position and states this in Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. As he struggles under the weight of sin, he says, I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. This is the cry of a man who was struggling with sin in his personal life. As a result, he exclaims, Wretched man that I am, in verse 24. Often we have this feeling of wretchedness deep in our souls, and it can take a toll on our self-esteem and cause us to be muted when it comes to talking to God. Helps Word Studies defines the term used for wretched as properly wretched, beaten down from continued strain, leaving a person literally full of calluses, deep misery, describing a person with severe side effects from great ongoing strain, significant hardships. The battle with sin had left Paul feeling deep misery internally. This happens to us as well, and misery breaks the heart and robs us of a healthy self-esteem that is found in the fact that God takes pleasure in our prayers of repentance as much as He takes pleasure in our praises of adoration. Paul's soul finds strength in this truth and is thrown into the presence of God as he seeks deliverance. Who will deliver me from this body of death? In verse 24. Instead of offering a lengthy theological treatise, he simply breaks out in adoration. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 24b through 25a. It is this that fuels the rest of Romans. God is the one who delivers through Jesus Christ, and we are worth what God says that we are. Because we are delivered, we stand and build our esteem on Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If we allow them, unconfessed sins, guilt, condemnation, and low self-esteem will keep us away from prayer. But if we stay away from God, where will we find help? Who will be the refuge of our souls? David, in all his distress, sadness, gloom, pain, sinfulness, loneliness, and the like, knew that his only refuge was God. So be prayed, come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Psalm chapter 38, verse 22. We too can pray like this with success. Lord, I have a feeling of guilt and condemnation. I do not believe that I deserve your mercy and grace, but come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Remember that guilt is focusing on our failures rather than focusing on the love mercy, grace, and faithfulness of God to forgive us when we confess and repent. He will free us from all our sins. He rids the soul of condemnation. When we truly believe this, we run towards Him and seek communion instead of running away from Him. Let us put aside the distractions of our daily lives and find solace for the soul in being alone in the presence of God in the communion of prayer. Living in sin will hamper your walk with God and pull your father away from him. Sin separates us from God, and when God is separated from us, he cannot hear us. Begin by asking yourself, is there any unconfessed sin in my life? Make sure nothing is blocking you from being able to hear God's voice. When a believer surrounds himself with sin, he pulls himself farther from God and consequently loses sensitivity to God's presence. Our God is holy and righteous, and no matter how much He loves us, He can't accept us if we are with filthy garments. Sin becomes a blockage for us to receive from God, so even when He speaks, we won't be able to hear Him. Psalms chapter 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. This requires looking deeper than the obvious. Most times when we ask God for something, God examines the motive of our hearts and if what we are asking for is not in line with His word or if there are any selfish motive in your request, as God brings things to mind, quickly ask for His forgiveness. And remember, there's no shame in repentance. This act of faith pleases God and restores our fellowship with Him. We have to draw near to God by doing what He desires. As sin pulls us away from Him, 
Holiness draws us closer to God. Being close to Him enables Him to hear us and do the things we ask for. The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29 The righteous man has answered prayers, but the sinner is far away from God and cannot communicate freely with God. If you are not living in sin, there is an assurance that your prayers will be answered. Don't get tired of praying until you get your answers. It is the sinner that has no hope of receiving answers. The righteous man will surely receive of God. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. James chapter 4, verse 3 You ask and do not receive, because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. We must also bear in mind that the answer to our prayer may be no. God will not give us anything that goes against His will. The Bible is full of specific answers about what is right and wrong. So don't forget to dig into God's Word. As you read the Bible, ask God to speak to you through the Holy Spirit, who lives inside you. And He said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, then they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. Eighteen, therefore, I also will act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. If we live in obedience to God, God promises to hear us and grant our desires. Decide to start living obediently today.